kids, we're back again with another exciting lesson from Team Kids, the place where we learn how to become better followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. We've talked about worship, we've talked about the Bible, the Word of God, and the importance of those things, and then we've been talking about prayer. Today we're going to have our final lesson on prayer. So let's, let me show you something about the importance of praying together. We pray by ourselves, but we need to pray together. So watch this. This is a bag of, guess, Skittles! Everybody loves Skittles, and Skittles are juicy, wonderful candy, delicious candy, and they're all different colors, right? Just like all of us. And so these Skittles are gonna represent believers in Jesus. And this is what I'm gonna do, okay? I'm gonna put all the believers all gather together and I know these days it's hard to kind of gather together in the same way that we might have been accustomed to do but we can still gather together and when we gather together it's important we pray for one another and we pray together there's something powerful about praying not just by ourselves but with other believers so this hot water that I have here is gonna represent prayer. So all these believers are gathered together and they're going to begin to pray with one another. I gotta do this really carefully. And this is very hot, woo! And when we pray, we need to be hot for Jesus, right? So what's gonna happen? What do you see happening? Can you see what's happening as people begin to pray together here? What's happening? All of the colors are running together, aren't they? Wow. And that's what happens when we come together in prayer. All of those prayers that we pray together are offered up to the Lord. And He answers them. It's powerful. We need to come together and pray together. So, are you ready for today's lesson? All about praying together? Don't go away. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're ready for today's story. And as we were saying, our story is about prayer. Well, our story takes place in Acts chapter 12, verses 6 to 17. The story is all about Peter and some of the other friends of Peter. King Herod was ruling at this particular time. And King Herod was a king that was not too favorable toward Christians. In fact, one of the disciples, James, had been killed just for preaching the good news about Jesus. And now, Peter was arrested and he was put in prison awaiting a death sentence. This particular night, he was in his cell, chained up to two guards. So here we have Peter in prison, all alone, chained up to two guards who were guarding him. And not only were there two guards he was chained to, there was around 16 other guards, just for one guy, Peter. And what was his crime? Preaching the good news of Jesus. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how Peter must have felt? And this particular night, Peter knew that the next morning he was going to go and probably go to his death because Herod was going to bring him before him and they were going to execute him or put him to death. Oh Lord Jesus, we're crying out to you tonight to help Peter in prison. Oh yes, Lord, please. You need to rescue him. He's going to go before the authorities tomorrow and they're going to they're, they're going to put him to death. Oh Holy Spirit, come. We need you tonight. We're pra we're frantically praying. We're fervently praying. Oh, we're calling on your name. Oh yes, Lord, please come. This particular night, Peter was falling asleep, still chained up. When all of a sudden, a bright light came. An angel of the Lord appeared right in Peter's prison cell. Peter! 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 Wake up! Come with me! Um, what, what's going on? Uh, I must be having a dream. No, Peter! Peter, quickly, come! Come! Huh? Come with me! Oh! Peter's chains 
fell off. And Peter, although he was still half asleep, followed after the angel right outside the door. Okay, Peter, come on, quick. Oh, 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 oh. And as suddenly as she appeared, the angel was gone, leaving Peter alone. Peter walked up to Mary's house. Mary was the mother of one of the disciples. He knocked on the door. Who could be at the door at this hour? I don't know. I guess I better go see. Peter! It's Peter! Get out of here. You're nuts. Peter's not here. But, but I'm sure it was Peter. Hello? Rhoda? No, it's not Peter. It can't be Peter. No, it's not Peter. It can't be Peter, but it's Peter. I tell you, it's Peter. Peter, Peter, come on in. It must be his angel. No, it's Peter. Yeah, it all started. I mean, you know, I was in prison, right? And, and uh, uh, I could hardly believe it, but an angel suddenly appeared from nowhere. My chains fell off. I thought I was asleep still, and I was having a dream, you know? But then, well... Then, then, then she led me right out of the prison, and, and I came straight here. And uh, It's amazing, isn't it? God is good. Well, we were frantically, fervently praying for you, Peter. Yeah, we were. Yes, we were. Well. I think I'm going to go now uh, and uh, tell the others, tell James, or, or tell, tell the others uh, that I'm, I've been released. We will, Peter. All right, bye now. And so, Peter went to a safe place. And in the morning, after the guards and King Herod discovered that Peter was gone, he was very angry. Couldn't understand how in the world he could have escaped. The guards were executed or killed because he didn't think they were doing a good job. But it was an amazing thing, wasn't it? That Peter, about to appear before Herod the king, and about to be put to death for just preaching about Jesus. When his friends prayed for him fervently and believe in God, although we wonder, did they really believe God when Peter appeared? They didn't even believe it was him. And sometimes we can do that. When we pray together, it's powerful. God hears and God answers prayer. Now, I have one more thing to show you, but before we do, let's get to our memory verse. Our memory verse for today is taken from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. And it says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. We're being told that we need to be praying, led by God's Holy Spirit, no matter what's happening. And keep alert and continue to pray. Peter's friends didn't just pray little prayers and then forgot about him. They were persistent, crying out to God that he would be released and God answered. Now, I'm going to pray and then I have something to show you. All right, let's do it. Father, thank you, Lord, that you have given us the avenue of prayer, that we can pray for one another, Lord, and you hear and you answer. We thank, we're thankful to you that, Lord, that you have given us a heart for you, a heart that we want to share with one another in our prayers. And when we pray, you do amazing things. Thank you, Lord God, for the gift of prayer. And thank you, Lord God, that you love us enough to answer and hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're back. We've been learning all about the importance of praying for one another, praying also together. It's powerful. And that's what God desires, praying on our own in our own personal time with Jesus and then praying together for each other. And we see how God answers, as we did in our story today. Now, I want to show you something that you can put up for yourself 
so that you remember to pray for different people in your lives. And it all involves what we had in the beginning, Skittles, okay? So this is the Skittle prayer for others. And so you can set up something like this, and it doesn't have to be like what I've done. You can put red for pastors in the church, your church friends, green for your neighbors and people at school, teachers, yellow for your family, orange for Canada and other nations of the world, and then brown for the salvation of others, people you know who don't know Jesus. Or you could change it all up and do it a different way. But if you have this here, then you remember to pray for the different groups of people that you know, all right? And so, keep that in mind. And I was saying at the beginning that this is the very last uh, lesson for teen kids. Next week, we're gonna be having some brand new material, brand new things to learn. It's gonna be exciting. In fact, the whole church is gonna be doing the same so sort of stuff that we're doing here in Sunday School. So before we leave, before we say goodbye, remember our team cheer. We're gonna do it one last time. So if you have any, any banners, any ribbons, any pom-poms, get them out, get out of your seat, stand up and let's do the cheer together. Are you ready? Come on, some of you are not getting out. Let's go. All right, you ready? Here we go. We're on the T, E, A, M. It's on the B, E, A, M. We're on the team, it's on the B. Yay, Jesus! We're on the winning team. All right, see you next time. God bless you.